Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bernard Alvarez webcast. Uh, today, we have a very wonderful uh, presenter joining us. Uh, we're going to be discussing one of my all-time favorite classical books of wisdom, the Bhagavad Gita, which has been brought into the 21st century by our guest today. Uh, his name is Dr. Isaac Bentwich, and he is a longtime practitioner and teacher of yoga and meditation. He is trained as a physician and as a scientist. He has founded three life science technology companies, leading revolutions in medicine, genomics, and environment conservation. And he now heads Innovation Center at Technion. Recognized as one of the top 10 innovative universities in the world. The vision and innovations that underline the companies he founded came through periods of silent meditation, retreats at the foothills of the Himalayas and in Galilee. His path is one of reverence to the wisdom teachings that shine through different traditions and all religions. The study and practice of Gita's wisdom teachings has profoundly touched his life. Uh, so much that he, so passionately uh, that he wants to share it with others and was uh, focused and spent a lot of time bringing this new modern translation of calling it the Gita, which I love, uh, bringing it into the 21st century. So without further ado, let me welcome uh, Dr. Isaac Benwich. Welcome, Isaac. Thank you so much for, for doing what you do and for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's uh, lovely uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to join you and uh, looking forward to this conversation. Yes, yes, me too. And I have been for since, uh, since we booked it. Um, so <laughs> I, think, uh, I, think, I think the first thing that people want to know is, wow, a translation of the Bhagavad Gita, what, uh, no easy task. Uh, I remember as a child, I wanted to update the Bible and I started doing it. I was like, I'll never get this done, you know? <laughs> I wanted to translate it myself, but I can imagine with the Bhagavad Gita, uh, there's been so many different translations, and yours, yeah. for me, seems very, very accessible uh, and easy to read, which I think is very important for many people. Uh, what was it that drew you to want to take on such a huge endeavor? Well, it never, it, you know, I'm a startup uh, guy. I, I, I for uh, 29 uh, years in my day job, I, I founded the technology companies and, and let them grow. So I, I guess I'm the type uh, that uh, uh, has this uh, streak of the uh, reckless abandon jumping into a, a business. And uh, I never planned to, to translate the Gita as such. In fact, uh, funnily enough, the, my first interaction with the Gita I uh, was uh, when I was uh, some 34 years ago in a yoga teacher training course, a month long intensive uh, course in the desert uh, here in Israel. Um, I enjoyed everything in the course uh, the yoga, the philosophy, the meditation, except one thing I hated the Gita. Mm. Um, there were, <laughs> I couldn't relate, uh, I wasn't that hot on, on Indian mythology. I have a very strong connection to my Jewish roots and very strong connection and reverence to other religions, uh, uh, Jesus and Christianity and uh, Hinduism. But uh, what do I need to uh, go into this mythology thing? So, so I, I didn't really get it, nor did I connect. Um, ultimately, it became really a big uh, love of my life. And uh, starting the translation was really a, an act of, uh, um, uh, you know, my sadhana, my uh, spiritual uh, practice. I would uh, write verses, uh, uh, bringing them into my mother tongue of Hebrew. And then gradually it, began, it turned into a project and I was really captivated by uh, um, the wisdom within these verses and the directness that uh, the, the liveness uh, that's there. And then uh, after the whole thing um, sort of grew into a 12 year long project. Uh, and, but it, it was really something that I, I initially did uh, for myself. Uh, as the years went by and I saw the effect of these wisdom teachings in my life, I became very passionate and I am very passionate about sharing it with others 
um, uh, the relevance, uh, the urgency, the relevance of this uh, wisdom, not as something that's in some faraway land or uh, go seek some other religion, but something that's really for here and now. And I'm, I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Yes, yes. And I, I, I'm very curious. So when you began to translate the Gita, did you have to learn Hindu or did you take uh, a, a Hebrew version or, or an English version and translate I, that for yourself? Right. No, I, I have rudimentary uh, 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 knowledge of Sanskrit, which is the Hindu language in which the Gita is, is uh, uh, written. There are uh, over 200 translations into English. Uh, several of these uh, are uh, uh, profound translations that include word-by-word translation uh, of each uh, uh, verse. And so I worked uh, with, uh, since there's a lot of ambiguity in the language itself, I'm not a master of anything. So I basically uh, sat am uh, sitting at the feet of masters uh, who uh, have the wisdom to uh, tell us what are the, the deep meanings that the, the commentaries on the Gita are much bigger than the Gita itself. The Gita is a, a poem of 700 verses. So all I did was really work from this one of the, particularly one of these translations by a master called Swami Shivananda, who lived in, in, at the beginning of previous, uh, died in, in 1964, I think. Um, and so he's one of the, the masters that wrote a word by word translation. I worked from English back to English. What's the point of the whole exercise? as you will have seen from reading uh, this, uh, to make the Gita accessible, uh, you really need to peel layers of mythology and terminology um, and do so carefully, and then you get to the music of the Gita. That's what, what, when I really sort of blew my top, I, I, I didn't know that it was a song. I didn't know the, the, the literal meaning of Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, divine song. Um, and so it was written as a song, and yet, until now, funny enough, there, is, uh, there hasn't been a translation till now that uh, um, um, went through the, the process of uh, rewriting it with the meter and the melodiousness of the original Sanskrit. So it was not an intentional thing that I planned to do, it was fell in love and life took it from there. But ultimately, what came out, and we can read a few verses, is this uh, magical thing uh, where the, the Gita is allowed to sing again. Um, and it's not co a coincidence that it is in song format, because the whole point of the, the Gita is to help us uh, 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 transform our life. Um, uh, and to do so, you have to go beyond thought and emotion. And music is uh, anything feminine, anything uh, that's intuitive and not analytical, it, it, it gives you a, a big jump uh, forward. Ultimately, it's the only way beyond our thoughts. And so the whole uh, melodiousness was, uh, uh, was a big thing. Um, and and I, can, I can feel that, and I can see that as I read through it. Um, so returning well uh, let me start the beginning of my path with the Gita and then we can yeah. perhaps expand on that is when I first had let's say my spiritual awakening in my early 20s uh, the Bhagavad Gita was referred to me by many people uh, except many of my spiritual teachers and whatnot and when I picked it up I, I and I, I, I'm bringing this up because of the way that you said it. it it's, uh, it's a song, and I didn't approach it as such. When I first picked it up, I started about, it started off uh, talking about the war uh, with the prince and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but, and immediately I was turned off. I was like, oh, I don't want to hear about war. I, I don't want to <laughs> read Sun Tzu. You know, I'm not here to read about Sun Tzu and the art of war. I wanted to know about wisdom and metaphysics yeah. and whatnot. And somehow, some way, I, I picked it up a few years later, and the essence of it got to me. But I will say that it was a little bit difficult for me to approach it at, at such a young age, perhaps in my early 20s, yeah. because I found it um, disconcerting, A, that I wanted spirituality, but they were first talking about war, but as well, not understanding the characters. So yeah. I was wondering if perhaps maybe we, you can give a quick introduction uh, to the characters, 
and kind of get us over that hurdle of those first few passages yeah. of it's not about war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so this is my favorite uh, topic, actually, or one of my uh, favorite topics uh, here. So here's the deal, here's the story. Uh, you have a dialogue between a disciple and the master. Uh, even as you start to describe the Gita, uh, let us all uh, understand what it's trying to convey. Yes, it is between an Indian prince called Arjuna and his teacher uh, called uh, Krishna. But actually, it's a, a dialogue, the timeless dialogue between a master and disciple. I, I have goosebumps every time I say, because every one of us, every single one of us who's had this experience of sitting at the feet of a, a enlightened people, to, to, to some degree, people to whom light shines, and whose ego has been subdued, uh, and you're touched by, uh, by that, uh, like, we all know this experience. And so it's the, the, the dialogue between master and disciple is what the Gita is about. Um, but going back to the character, so there's this prince, um, uh, Arjuna, uh, he is uh, uh, forced into a battle which he does not want to fight by evil uh, family members. Um, and uh, reluctant, uh, being reluctant to fight, he turns to the advice of his friend, his charioteer, and no less than God incarnate. So he, we already have this uh, uh, crazy Indian humor, if you will. Um, Gita is an invitation uh, of having a friendly afternoon, uh, afternoon chat with God. How about that? Uh, would you like to ask God, uh, hey, God, tell me, what is this world about? Why am I not happy? Uh, what's the meaning of life? What are the ways to, to change our, our consciousness, our, our thinking? This is what the Gita uh, uh, is about. Now, uh, where does the dialogue take place and why this whole war thing? I come from Israel. Uh, we're sensitive uh, to that. We have enough uh, violence as it is. I don't need it in, in my spiritual books like what you said. Um, after you get the hang of it, you see that it's actually perfect, as all wisdom scriptures they are. This is not Jesus on the, the, the Mount of Beatitude, uh, on the, overlooking the serene uh, Sea of Galilee. This is not uh, a Buddha in Sarnath or under the, the Bodhi tree uh, with a few selected disciples. Um, the two armies are about to wage war, and there is a, 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 this metaphysical freeze frame, and everything holds, and now the question is asked. Tell me, Lord, tell me, God. It is actually a, a, a turning for the inner voice of our soul. This is not some external God on the cloud, certainly not a, a, a wrathful one. It is the inner voice of our soul that we're talking to. Tell me, I want to know, I want to understand. Why is it at the, 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 uh, uh, at the battlefield? This is no time for BS. Uh, as direct and as urgent and as uh, real uh, as it gets. And that's why it's so relevant for today, right? Uh, I mean, we have mortgages to pay and relationships and kids and careers and uh, we're in fight constantly. Our life is all about the uh, action. Uh, and if time seems uh, to be going faster and faster, we don't have time for, uh, 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 for beating around the bush. Get to the bottom of it. Tell me what this is about. That's the urgency of the, of the Gita. Um, think, when you think about it, it's really an amazing accomplishment that the Gita uh, has done. The most profound questions uh, of life. This is why so many of the great minds throughout history were uh, inspired by the Gita. Uh, uh, the greatest, the deepest uh, secrets of life, the most profound philosophical uh, uh, questions and answers Eye level, no commentary needed, a dialogue between you and God, or you and the inner voice of your soul. That's what this is. 700 verses, bam, that's it. Uh, <laughs> this is what drew me to the, the Gita, and, and that, that was sort of the charter that I, and the path that I, I walked. Yes, you, you, did, you do need to read a lot of commentaries in order to understand what this is about, but ultimately, I, I tried to weave in 
uh, the, uh, the meaning of each verse into the words themselves so that it really speaks as it should, directly eye level and the, in format of a, of a song that, that sort of rolls around with these pearls of wisdom that sort of roll around in your mind and do their thing. Uh, as you meditate on them, as you go through your day, um, they roll around in your like shiny uh, pearls of wisdom. Uh, the, the, I've not smoked, but but the, you you read these uh, the, these verses and it's it's a, it's a significant trip that that I can say. Yeah, absolutely, little little epiphanies wrapped up in a nice bundle. <laughs> That's right. And I appreciate that you do, uh, I, I do see the prefaces before the chapters. I kind of uh, give you an introduction so it's not so overwhelming and kind of put you in the right head space to accept right. the information. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's uh, really helpful. So with most, um, with mo I, I guess we could call it Eastern philosophical, spiritual paths and whatnot, there are, <coughs> excuse me, there are certain uh, foundations within that uh, type of spiritual philosophy. Uh, for example, uh, in Buddhism, we talk about uh, nirvana and transcending the self and connecting with the oneness of all things. Uh, you know, in many uh, Native American traditions, it's about seeing the aliveness of all things and how the earth is alive and everything is alive, the universe is alive. What, uh, what takeaway did you get, uh, or perhaps I should ask you, out of all the wonderful pearls of wisdom and epiphanies that the Gita could offer you, what was the most profound to you, and could you share it and perhaps uh, teach it to us? What did you learn sure. from that one most sure. profound? I, I don't know that I can answer it as, as such. I, I will say two things. One, the thing that strikes me as, as very special about the, the Gita is that it really gives a, an, an amazingly clear uh, foundation, I believe, to all religions and paths, full stop, period. Uh, any uh, path of wisdom, the American Indian uh, path, the, uh, the Hindu, the Buddhist, the Christian, the, the, the Muslim, the Jewish, uh, you find the, the deep meaning of the wisdom that underlies, uh, underlies these uh, paths uh, clearly explained within the Gita. Um, and uh, 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 to take it to uh, uh, to look at it from a, uh, another angle, the Gita describes three paths, uh, three complementary building blocks, which uh, the Gita revolves around. In fact, the 18 chapters of the Gita are divided six chapters each, beginning with the path of action, going on to the path of devotion, and finally the path of wisdom. Now, when you say what the, what is, what's the takeaway that I take from the Gita, I really connect to the to this uh, uh, gradient uh, pathway at, uh, in my uh, practices of, of Tibetan Buddhism. They uh, talk about Lam Rim, the graduated pathway. Uh, this is, uh, uh, and so this is also a graduated pathway. We start with the action path. Action path means how do I live in this world? What do I do tomorrow morning? Uh, when the, 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 my boss at work is, is nasty or when I have problems with my spouse, how do I deal with that? How do I, what's the art of living that, uh, that will allow me uh, to live each day uh, fully so that as life unfolds, I don't feel more worn out, but more lifted uh, so that life doesn't, it's not just a drag and, you know, we start out as, as beautiful babies. Look at how beautiful everything is. And then we sort of get crunched by, by the erosion of life. Uh, can we do anything about it? How can, can we even not just withstand the, 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 uh, the wear and tear, but uh, have it be turned into a school of evolution? Uh, yes, we can. This is the, the first path, path of action. Uh, in a nutshell, learning how to act egolessly, uh, how to uh, uh, feel that life is acting through us rather than we are doing the acting. So that's the path of action. Path of devotion takes the next huge step uh, forward, leaving intellect behind, 
and jumping into the intuitive, ecstatic, mystic, uh, devotional, emotional intelligence path, opening the heart, um, feeling the unity in the world around us. You spoke about the Indian path, the, the, the native Indian path of, of uh, feeling the aliveness that's uh, there. This is the second, the, the, the path of devotion that the Gita uh, describes. The, the tenth chapter goes on and on about uh, uh, the Lord saying, I am the, the, the sweet fragrance of earth, as well as the brilliance of fire. Uh, and no me prince um, uh, seed eternal, all that grows and blossoms I sire. So it is uh, seeing the liveness, the unity around us, so is eventually to feel a part of it. Um, it's not if we begin as I am here and Bernard is there and there is a, a, a good connection or bad connection or whatever, uh, this melts into unity of we're all part of life, um, a sacred uh, life. And then the third path uh, is the, uh, um, the evolution of, uh, of all of that. Uh, and it deals with this uh, question, who am I really? Uh, and ends with the growing realization, uh, you were fortunate to experience it at, at a young age, um, uh, we are life itself. We are the sacred uh, oneness uh, that's around us and not this frail body uh, and mind with which we identify. Uh, it's a long, it's a lifelong uh, process for all of us uh, of many lifetimes, uh, but uh, uh, the Gita is uh, guiding us along this uh, path. And so uh, you ask, what's the one thing that, that I like uh, about it? And I gave three, but I, I hope that that's okay. Yeah, no, well, actually, it's kind of one. It's the, it's the path of the Gita. So it's one path, yeah. three, three yeah. segments to the path. And I'm yeah. so glad that was something that you chose in the sense that, uh, we talk about how it's a lifelong path, but it's interesting to me that perhaps those of us uh, who have the awareness, uh, who have the ability to maybe visit and get a glimpse of all three, that it changes and it will, it, it's almost, I, not to get too Buddhist, I don't know if it's very Gita, but it's like the waves of awareness, uh, they rise and then they fall back into the ocean, they rise and at any given moment, I could be on any one of those three levels, you know, yeah. of awareness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and, and uh, two things that I want to share with uh, from the Gita about that. Uh, one, uh, and this is really where the, the, uh, the commentaries help to, to uh, get the right understanding of this. And uh, um, the, the fact that there are three paths should not be mistaken uh, to, uh, to connote that you do this, and then you do that, and then you do that. Uh, they're they're uh, interwined. Um, it's very personal. Some people connect more to the wisdom path, uh, some uh, more to the devotional path, some more to the action path. And as you mentioned, in everyday action, uh, we, we switch back and forth and, uh, between these uh, things. But the second thing that I want to share um, uh, it's interesting that the Gita dedicates out of 18 chapters uh, two and a half uh, full chapters, um, uh, three chapters, uh, to uh, it, it, what is called nature qualities. Uh, originally, they're called gunas. Um, they, they, in order to help us understand uh, that uh, nature is acting through us, the Gita helps us uh, understand that there are different aspects of nature that are acting uh, through us and that, that they're constantly changing. So rather than uh, be trapped uh, in the current notion that we have, I am me, this body, this Isaac, this name, these memories, these thoughts, uh, uh, um, and uh, I am angry now or I am happy now. No, 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 says the Gita. You got it all wrong. Uh, yes, exactly like you said, Bernard, uh, waves will come up and subside in the mind. A wave of anger is there. And so this transition, and then it is gone. A wave of sacredness and clarity is there. 
and then it subsides and, uh, and is gone. And so uh, the Gita is very beautiful in uh, help, uh, assisting us to, to see this and to change the, our, our uh, point of view from I am anger to a, a wave of anger is blowing through me. Like you're living in a tent and winds are breathing through, right? Uh, the same way that you look at, at nature and uh, it's summer, it's hot outside, you're sweaty. The Gita says, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. Um, and it's very understandable. When it's hot outside, it's hot inside and vice versa. Uh, it's called summer. Uh, don't hang on to it. Enjoy it while it's there. Don't uh, uh, yearn for it when it's uh, gone. And please understand that the very same thing uh, is uh, true about our mental state as well. Now I am spiritual in the sense that my mind is clear and it's like the windows of my soul, uh, which is the mind, these tainted glasses that we keep changing, I'm now uh, wearing uh, uh, clear glasses and so I see divinity everywhere. Uh, everybody is my friend. Uh, no anger arises. Unity is apparent. Uh, um, and now I'm putting my red glasses on. I didn't uh, intentionally do it. It's happening the same way that summer replaces winter and vice versa. And anger is there and criticism and uh, judgmental. Uh, uh, and that too is not me. Uh, these are the uh, tinted glasses of our uh, mind. And the Gita lovingly walks us uh, through this, um, uh, helping us to, to understand these phenomena and to overcome them. And interestingly enough, uh, when the prince asks the, the, the teacher, to tell me, how do you overcome this nature, these uh, uh, changing uh, moods? And I, I was really blown away by the answer when I, when I first sort of got uh, into it. You'd think that the Gita would preach to, well, be righteous. You know, be holy, be a saint, uh, 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 strive always to, to have these. Uh, and of course, that's part of what we do. Uh, but the Gita actually says, accept these changing uh, moods of, of uh, the mind as what they are, nature. Exactly like you said, waves come up and they go down. Uh, let them come and let them go and understand that you are not that. Uh, you are the ever-present witnessing consciousness, um, the unity, the divine unity uh, around it, experiencing these emotions and, and uh, senses, etc. Beautiful. And if, if it's not too simplified for me to say, is, is perhaps what it's telling us is not to uh, identify with ego. Know that ego is there. Ego yes. has a role in the nature of who we are, but yes. not to identify it as the ego. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And let me uh, let me read to you two verses, which, uh, if I may, uh, yes. two uh, two verses which uh, uh, I found so appealing that I actually uh, carried them in, uh, wrote them on a piece of paper and carried them in my uh, tiny purse uh, in my pocket for for a couple of years. Uh, uh, I do nothing at all the wise never forgets. Heart united with the divine, enlightened soul. Whether grasping, moving, sleeping, or breathing, whatever is heard, or what the eyes behold, eyes open or shut, whatever seen or heard, silently, without words, the wise always knows. I do not see any sight, I do not hear, is the senses that see and hear all those. So this beautiful uh, invitation to live life fully doesn't say, oh, the, the senses are bad, uh, pleasure is bad, go be a hermit, uh, uh, retreat from the world, uh, go, go meditate in a cave. There's a, a lot about that as well. And, 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 uh, 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 times of silence in the day or when opportunity arises are very powerful, but living life fully, enjoying the senses as they come, but with the opening the door to this wisdom uh, uh, in a different place. He says, um, you are like the arch uh, the bow in my hand, 
uh, the same way that you are the archer, you're holding your bow. Letting us un understand that the universe or God or nature is acting through us. Yes, the senses see what they need to see, uh, but uh, it's I who am seeing. I love that. That's brilliant. And it relates very much to how I feel about any spiritual path, of all the spiritual paths. So uh, is, is the Gita already out, Isaac? Uh, it, it's uh, actually being released uh, uh, on uh, June 21st. Um, oh. uh, so uh, uh, with the this Kindle week. version. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this it will be this week. A, Wonderful. Uh, wow. Yeah, I'm, so, yeah. I'm so happy to uh, have gotten a, an advanced copy then. So thank you to you and Eileen. <laughs> um, where is it going to be available? Will it be available at all major booksellers or Amazon? Where can it's, people find out? Yeah, it's available in all uh, uh, major booksellers, uh, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, and uh, all of the others, uh, and in select uh, bookstores as well. Um, and in addition to this, uh, uh, Bernard, we were uh, offering to uh, uh, viewers and listeners of the, your show a participation in a, a raffle uh, uh, for uh, 25 uh, free uh, books uh, of, the, of the Gita as our gift uh, to uh, uh, the listeners and the viewers on your channel. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Do, where can they sign up for that? Or? We, uh, well, uh, um, I'll, I'll send you the link. So you, you post it on your uh, uh, channel and uh, just uh, tap, click the link. Um, and uh, you, you, uh, uh, you, can, you can actually uh, both uh, participate in the raffle and invite a friend to participate as well. Each one can, can invite up to 10 friends uh, uh, to participate uh, as well. So, uh, and with our uh, That's thanks. Uh, Thank you. That's so kind. And uh, do you have? Do you personally have a website that you people yes. can learn more about you? Yes, the, the website is uh, www.newgita.com. Perfect. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Isaac. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, I'm looking forward to. Well, I, I haven't finished the version of the Gita yet, so I'll have, I look forward to finishing it. And uh, sharing this with everybody, and hopefully everybody will enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you for all this uh, years of dedication and putting this together and sharing it with us now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you everyone uh, who's watching as well. <laughs> Very good. Thanks so much. And everybody, we will be back next week, of course. I love you. You have a wonderful week now. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.